Hello and welcome to the program. I am Oyi Adekunle. Nigeria, as we know, has reached a new phase of the COVID-19 pandemic with reported cases of the virus consistently on the rise. This week alone, back to back, the country has been smashing its previous records and as it stands, the nation is moving closer to the 100,000 mark. And with growing confidence that vaccination can end the pandemic, the federal government is expecting 42 million doses of COVID-19 vaccines to battle the disease. Out of this, 100,000 doses will hopefully be received before the end of this month. Let's now discuss this further. I'm being joined on the program by Dr. Ekanem Nseabasi, who is a public health physician. Dr. Ekanem, thank you very much for joining us on the program. Thank you for having me. Now, let's first of all begin with the surge in cases. Seeing cases go up like this on a daily basis must be quite worrying for you, isn't it? Yeah, of course, it's quite worrisome uh, that we are seeing a spike of uh, this. But it's obviously a second of uh, COVID And uh, for me, it, it's not a surprise, though it's worrisome, uh, because some of the activities uh, that took place last uh, few two months uh, accounted for what we are doing right now. Uh, but for the, it is about what we have to go for. How do we get this narrative? And how do we ensure that we get COVID-19 from Nigeria? And uh, that is where vaccination comes. And uh, I believe that as a country, we should be able to unite and end the COVID-19 pandemic. But, but would you say that uh, the surge is a consequence or merely a consequence of the negligence during the festive season, for instance? Or more factors could have contributed to this recent surge? Well, a lot of things uh, from the NSAS protest in the office that happened sometime in October. And of course, uh, Again, the Christmas celebrations, you know, we also saw a lot of activities among the youth and, uh, you know, uh, even ceremonies that took place. You know, these are some of the things that, uh, you know, uh, gave people the opportunity to, you know, lay down their guard mm -hmm. and, you know, abuse some of these uh, uh, COVID-19 precautionary measures. You could see uh, uh, the rallies where youth were come together and uh, look at the picture, the video that most of them were not putting on their uh, their, their face masks. All right, you see uh, a, 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 a special whereby people move around in crowded places. I mean, these are uh, these are directly you know, uh, 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 abusing the public health measures against COVID-19. So. It is only expected that after such activity, the uh, number of infected persons would have increased. And that is what we are seeing right now. That is exactly what is playing out. Mm. And the government is expecting vaccines before or on or before the end of January. Between now and then, would you say that uh, this second wave might actually be worse than what we saw in the first case because in the absence of vaccines at least now until when we eventually get them definitely uh, if you can look at if you look at uh, you see that we have not had this uh, explosion the, the rate of infection before now this is because a lot of uh, persons have abused the public health measure now more many people are symptomatic, and even these people are mixing up, they are getting mixed up with the public. And hence, we are going to see a lot of people, uh, you know, coming down to COVID. And this is not even the end. Before the vaccine comes into Nigeria, we are going to see even much more cases in Nigeria. So my, 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 my prayer is that the vaccine should come in. And then again, even with the vaccine coming in, I say it at pity that Vaccination is not the only requirement for eliminating COVID-19. While we vac get vaccinated, we must still adhere to the public health measures against COVID-19. Because, of course, for the Pfizer vaccine, it is only 
95 percent effective. That means 95 out of 100 persons who take the vaccine will be protected. What about the five percent? All right. I mean, of course, the, the AstraZeneca vaccine is not also 100 percent effective. So people must learn to adhere to the public health agenda with or without the vaccine. And as you rightly said, that vaccination is not the only way we can end this pandemic. So let's talk about the importance of the vaccine in itself now. How important is it in the fight against the pandemic? Well, the truth is that vaccination uh, helps to boost human's immunity against a particular disease, what we call passive acquired immunity. Now, this is what helps most times in uh, preventing diseases. And for a disease that has no cure, like COVID-19, with a high level of spread or transmissibility or call it virulence, the only effective way of eliminating such a disease is through vaccination. All right? And then there's need for Nigerians to understand how, when, and the need to complete their dosing of vaccine of uh, COVID-19 vaccine. Now, for example, the Pfizer vaccine, as you know, uh, immunity only is conferred after the second dose of the vaccine. Mm. And that means that until the second dose is taken, I mean, about three uh, to four weeks after the first dose, immunity is not guaranteed. But once the vaccine is taken, I can say for certainty, based on the facts that we have in, at our disposal, that at least 95% of the, about 100 persons will be protected against the, uh, the, the virus. And the, the good thing is that if 95% are protected, then through what we call a herd immunity, everyone would eventually be protected. So the vaccine is very, very important. And that is why Nigerians must understand the need for the vaccine and the need for all of us to key into the vaccination project and ensure that everyone has access to the vaccine. And Dr. Ekanem, just to be clear now, does it mean that when a person receives the vaccine, the person becomes immune and cannot contract COVID-19? Is that what you're saying? Once the second dose is taken, yes. The person is much likely not going to be infected even after being exposed to COVID-19. Because what the vaccine does is that when it gets into the system, it informs the immune system, you know, to produce targeted antibodies. These antibodies will notice and eliminate any COVID-19 virus, that's SARS-CoV-2, that comes into the system, maybe as a result of future exposure. Once the, vac the virus comes in, because the antibodies have already been stipulated and are active, they will immediately eliminate the virus mm -hmm. through what we call phagocytosis. Hmm. Uh, and for Nigeria now, when the vaccine eventually arrives, who are those that you think should be, uh, be administered, the vaccine should be administered to first and why? Of course, of course. Um, for, for, for Nigeria, just like we are, see, we are seeing in other countries, there is um, a modality you know, for determining who gets the vaccine first. First of all, frontline health workers who are at highest risk must receive the vaccine first. We have people from the nursing home, people in the hospital, doctors, nurses, laboratory scientists. These are people that have first-hand contact with patients. They need to take this vaccine first. So they has to, they has to be prioritized. Hence, they must take the vaccine first before others have access to it. Now, after the health, the frontline healthcare workers will have people uh, or in their old ages. By virtue of their age, they are more susceptible to COVID-19. And again, because most people that are in advanced age already have comorbidity, that means their risk of dying due to uh, COVID-19 or even developing the symptoms is higher. So we want to give them the vaccine first to ensure that we reduce their own risk of contacting the virus. Mm. And then from there, we'll now look at people that also have comorbidities. We'll look at people that are, um, are uh, living with HIV because these people already have a compromised immune system. 
now from there will now move over to people who have maybe cardiac disease, maybe diabetes, obesity, which are the comorbidities that increases the risk of death with COVID-19. From there, we can now go to the general population. So this is how the vaccine should be distributed so that the people that need it most can get it first. And we've seen reports of uh, countries where the vaccine had been administered, where people developed reactions to the vaccine. And the WHO has also mentioned some conditions or for persons who cannot uh, get the vaccine. Could you please just educate us more on that? Okay, thank you. So every vaccine, not just vaccine, every medication, drugs and all of that, have what we call adverse reactions okay so when you take a particular drug you may develop some adverse reaction the same applies to vaccines now um we have seen cases where people in the uk in the us took a covid 19 vaccine by from pfizer and then they developed um you know serious adverse effects some moderate adverse effects some mild adverse effects from dizziness, you know, to headache, to mm -hmm. pains around the injection site. So basically, uh, COVID-19 has some of these side effects. But like other vaccines, there's what we call the Vaccine Adverse Event Reporting System, VIAS. Now, this uh, reporting system has already been established. Now that, in Nigeria, sorry, now that is the one that is uh, coordinating that. So. Um, the truth is that anyone that takes COVID-19 vaccine and experiences any adverse reaction should be able to report to NAVDA mm. through their health uh, provider, healthcare provider. And this will be documented so that it can be used to inform the manufacturers that, look, people who took this vaccine have experienced this uh, uh, adverse uh, reaction. And then people in Nigeria should also be educated on the uh, adverse events that have already been observed mm. you know, from the use of the vaccine in other countries so that Nigerians can have their minds prepared. Because right now, let me tell you what is going on. A lot of uh, Nigerians have received WhatsApp videos, WhatsApp uh, no, uh, voice notes telling them that they should avoid the vaccine. This is not the way to go. Rather, tell Nigerians this is what to observe. These are some of the things that you can observe when you take COVID-19 vaccine. So the Nigerians can prepare themselves. And once they experience any of those side effects, they can report to NAVDAN through the right channel. Rather than tell them that the vaccine is not safe and all of that. COVID-19 vaccine is safe, but just like any other vaccine, it has adverse reactions. Well, Dr. Ekanem, I'll just have you take a pause here. And when we return from this break, we'll come back to talk about some of these conspiracy theories that you've already mentioned and how it makes it difficult for vaccines to be administered in Nigeria. We'll take a short break here and we'll be right back. Don't go away. Hello? Yeah, I found your wallet in front of a supermarket. Meet me at Apple Junction. Yes, I'll be waiting for you. Now we find out. <laughs> Two of us. <laughs> Thank you very much, officer. You know, it's surprising that men like you still exist in the police force. Yes, oh, yes. This is just a token <laughs> of my appreciation. Oh, hey, no. You don't need to do this. We're only doing our job. Oh. <laughs> Thank you very much. God You're bless welcome. you. Now I know police is really my friend. Yes. Friend. Hey. Uh, I I which came up with this one now. I don't understand. I mean, wait, wait. You know your problem. You are greedy. I'm a policeman who is doing his job. All forms of corruption in the force. Not in my country. Corruption not in my country. 
Welcome back and thank you for staying with us on the program. We're still discussing the issue or the COVID-19 vaccination all across the world and of course how it affects Nigeria. The federal government has said it is expecting 100,000 doses of the Pfizer COVID-19 vaccine before the end of January and we're still just looking at uh, how prepared the country is for this. I still have on the program Dr. Ekanem Nsiabasi, who is a public health physician. Dr. Ekanem, thank you very much for staying with us on the program. Thank you so much for having me. It's my pleasure. Now, how ready, before we went on that break, you were talking about WhatsApp videos and the NCDC, the PTF, has talked severally about fake news and how it's affecting the fight against the pandemic. Now, how ready would you say Nigeria is for a vaccine? The government must actually have, the government has a task, if we can put it like that, of convincing people on, on yeah. why they should take the vaccine. So how ready are we? I, I would say that, uh, uh, just like I said on a TV show earlier on today, that uh, it's a serious challenge. We have a very serious challenge ahead of us. You know, I, I run a, a non-governmental organization, an NGO, Trinity Healthcare Foundation. And one of the things that we did recently was to um, uh, appraise the preparedness of Nigerian government and Nigerians uh, for the, you know, for the receipt of the COVID-19 vaccine. And I'll tell you something. In the focus group discussion that we did, and of course, the in-depth interview that we had with um, key opinion leaders. One of the things we observe is that there is already an apathy. There's a mistrust. Nigerians don't believe in the government. Nigerians don't believe whatever is coming from the government. As a matter of fact, Nigerians prefer to believe the stories and the reports coming from other people rather than the, the government. And of course, we have seen some social media influencers who are coming out saying that Nigerians should avoid taking the vaccine. This is a huge task ahead of uh, Nigeria. For Nigerians to be able to take up this vaccine, they need to be shown the reason why they must take the vaccine. And for us to achieve this, we need to strengthen public health and life. We need to educate Nigerians. It's about disease risk communication. We need to um, re-establish that connect with the people at the grassroots. Yes, NCDC is doing something in the right direction uh, by launching what we call the Orange Network. And through this network, they are trying to see how they can engage the community. But we need to do more. Mm -hmm. We need to bring in more community-based organizations. Tell them what we want them to tell the public. Empower them. Let them engage the public and discuss with the public in the language they understand. The public has been so indoctrinated with a lot of rumors, the conspiracy theory, how the Americans are using the vaccine. They want to kill Nigerians. They want to make Nigerians go sterile. We need to define this in the terms that they will understand. We need to make it more scientific. And then again, Rather than spend time telling Nigerians how we want to get the vaccine, the, the, the level at which we are already achieving uh, the vaccine pro, uh, procurement, we should spend that time and resources trying to engage Nigerians mm. and help them to unlearn what they have learned and relearn what we need them to know, which actually is the truth that we all need COVID-19 vaccine to be able to eliminate COVID-19. We need to use all forms of the media. For example, we need to develop WhatsApp messages the same way the Nigerians were, you know, indoctrinated about the vaccine and its dangers. We also need to use that same tool to engage Nigerians and dissuade them from believing in those rumors. For example, we need to engage social media influencers. That is an aspect that we need to, you know, also engage. We need to bring these people. These people have a lot of followers. They have people who believe so much in them. We need to engage the social media, uh, uh, you know, influencers in ensuring that they send the right message to them. Yeah. You know, we also need to work with, at the level of the grassroots, to work with traditional rulers. 
So we need to bring both the private sector and the public sector together. Help all Nigerians to learn what COVID-19 vaccine does and what it does not do. Yes, there are side effects, but we need to learn Nigerians to understand the side effects associated with COVID-19 vaccine, just like every other vaccine, like hepatitis vaccine, measles vaccine, just the same way they present their own adverse effects. We also need to learn Nigerians to know that COVID-19 vaccine has adverse effects. Nonetheless, it is safe and effective for beating COVID-19. So we need to engage Nigerians as much as possible and ensure that we prepare them because it is not about bringing the vaccine. It is about uptake of the vaccine. Mm -hmm. If you bring the vaccine and you don't have people to take it up, then it already is a failed project. So we need to actually pay attention to engaging and enlightening Nigeria on the need to be vaccinated. And I, I mean, we've seen other places, other countries where to boost public confidence, leaders came out on live TV to receive the vaccine. Do you think we should also adopt that in Nigeria too? Exactly. Honestly, I feel that um, one way we need to get Nigerians to believe in the system is mm. let us get some of the people that are prominent in Nigeria to come and publicly take this vaccine. It, it goes beyond just a demonstration. It, it works on the psychology of Nigerians. It lets Nigerians understand that this vaccine is safe. Again, you know, people have been hearing about the issue of messenger RNA, well, of course, which is the technology that uh, Pfizer and Moderna vaccine, uh, uh, you know, are, are using. We need to educate Nigerians on what messenger RNA does and what it does not do. Because Nigerians are already believing that, okay, we'll turn to cow, we'll turn to goat, we'll turn to gorilla when we take the back. This is not true. But this is what is going around within the social media space. We need to educate Nigeria. I ask you, if you ask me that, we have left Nigerians uh, uh, out of the loop for a long time. Mm -hmm. And we have allowed them to believe whatever they want to believe. And again, I want to say something. When we send out this message, we need to also monitor effectiveness of the message that we are sending out. It's not just about sending message. We need to also carry out survey. Uh, you know, you know, uh, hand by hand with what we are doing to know or to determine whether Nigerians actually believe what we are saying and are ready and convinced to take the vaccine. This is what we need to put in place so that Nigerians would key into this vaccination project and together we can actually eliminate COVID-19. Indeed. Uh, Dr. Ekane Mansiavasi, public health physician, we thank you very much for speaking to us on the program and, of course, for enlightening us on the COVID-19 vaccine. You public health physicians have a lot to do in this, and, and we're grateful that uh, you came and educated us on the program today. Thank you very much, Dr. Ekane. The pleasure is always mine. Thank you so much for the time. I appreciate it. Right. Yeah, on that note, we'll call it a wrap on this episode of the program. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you again next time. And please be safe. I am Un Adekun. Bye for now.